Hi, this is Troy Polamalu, and you're listening to Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. Andy, Mike, and Jason, the Fantasy Footballers, back with you. Monday, October 5th, the roller coaster ride continues. We got an extra Monday Night Football game here. Oh, yes, we do. And we're excited about that fact. Oh, yeah. I am super excited. A little perturbed they went with the overlap. Like, I, I understand that, you know, they, look, the prime time, the ESPN, they, ESPN game, they actually did move it back. I don't know if you guys realize that it starts like. 40 minutes later than it usually does. I have to admit something. Oh, no. This was my fault. Oh, you like the scheduling? I asked them to overlap it because my wife said that any more football <laughs> and we were going to have we were going to have words. So uh, I'm, I'm, I asked for the overlap so I could I could watch them both. I'm sorry. But I'm you, sorry. you got to go back and forth unless we bust out like some 1992 pip technology. You guys remember the Remember picture and picture? <laughs> 1990. Well, Pip, yeah, Pip was the jam. It, it was like the smallest, oh, yeah. most useless screen in the bottom left corner, but you could move it. Oh, you can move it to any oh, corner. Whichever corner you want, you got it. Hard time figuring out how to get the, a certain channel you wanted in there. Sometimes was, you pip something you didn't want. You would just be pipping the exact same channel you were already oh, on. You, yes, you were. In case you wanted to see it a little smaller. <laughs> Yes. Can you zoom out on that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, but, but we do have two games tonight, yeah, and do. that's good news because he, despite the fact that Cam Newton is not available, um, I'm sure you know, you've know you been following the news, and we thought maybe we wouldn't have a game. We thought maybe we wouldn't have a Saints-Lions game. Uh, it turned out there was a negative, uh, a false positive test for, for the Saints, so – you know, it, it, it's something where you wake up in the morning and you receive the information that you have no control over, and then you make the best adjustment you can make. Yeah, and, and uh, this morning, the Tennessee had the, the the first day where their tests were negative. Congratulations, as well. Tennis, the, Titans. Yeah. Get it together, man. Well, the nice thing is Ian Rappaport, I heard him um, on SiriusXM this morning saying that basically if the tests are good from here on out, they'll be playing the Bills, so hopefully it can uh, – rear view mirror that yeah it's it's just it's it's an unfortunate situation but fantasy football players you know we're removed from the realities of i mean the health and safety of the players and the communities is the most important thing we are reacting we are a fantasy show all of our advice is related to how you get your league functioning the best way possible mm -hmm. during a uh an unexpected time uh, in our league much like the week before when we thought that we might have a Tuesday night game for Tennessee Pittsburgh, um, or I guess that was this this past week we thought we were going to have it. Uh, we've made accommodations in all of our leagues for alternate situations. Should have a game tonight, and we're excited about it. Um, you know what I'm excited for? What are you excited for? Monday, Monday. A lot, a lot happened yesterday. We like to react in in the most punny way possible. <laughs> it's the only way to handle the pain. Oh, this is pretty good. Where all Henderson? Yes, that one was directly from Mike the Fantasy Hitman Wright. Uh, what about Malcolm Every Down Brown? He certainly was. That's unfortunate. Mm, and then DJ No More. Mm. DJ Remorse. Mm. CD Bam. <laughs> <laughs> TD Lamb. <laughs> Joy Mixon. Ooh, oh, yeah. that's simple but true. That's a a kittle goes a long way. Meh, meh, why did I read that one? I don't know. <laughs> Miles Blanders. <laughs> Kenyon, Kenyon Mistake. Kenyon Mistake. Oh, oh Kenyon no. Kenyon Flake. <laughs> so we went from Potty Miller to oh, Hottie Miller. <laughs> Scotty too Hottie. This is the best we had, Brooks. <laughs> 
It was a rough week for the puns, apparently. <laughs> Looked through a lot of them. We had about 600 submissions. Uh, you could have gone Kenyon, Kenyon Flake again. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> How you feeling? Jason, I don't okay. want to be here. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Every week, last week, you had a nice fantasy week. You went 6-0 in all of your leagues, all of your picks and predictions. They worked out. Yeah. And you were feeling good. Now, I was on top of the world. You beat me in fantasy last week. Crushed. Sending me into a tailspin. Crushed mm -hmm. me. And, uh, yeah, I was in, I was where you were last week. Now, this week, I got, like, you know, Odell Beckham Jr. scoring a touchdown a minute. I've got Joe Mixon throwing three down. Mm -hmm. Hello. And then you didn't have the same week. And no. you did not stay the whole day yesterday. <laughs> no, I, I took off a little bit early, uh, uh, you know, because – Kenyon Drake. And Didn't you go to McDonald's on the way home? I did not. I ate sushi last night. Okay. I said if I'm I'm gonna if I'm gonna eat my pain away, I'm gonna at least do it with somewhat healthy food. Okay. Um but yeah, I mean look, Kenyon Drake, I, I issued my apology about halfway through that game. It's it, no hope I, I for take, no hope for a seventy five yard touchdown run in no the second half of the game. For a, I mean he, it didn't look good. The 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 the, the play designs didn't match what he was doing. He looked slow. I don't get it because I remember watching the you know the first week looking like he made some special moves. I, I legitimately I'm going to go back today uh, and I, I want to watch all of the. I can tell you some of what's going on. Kenyon Drake plays. Some of what's going on. It's an X's and O's problem in Arizona. What they're doing is they're mm. spending a lot of time on early downs, run down situations instead of giving the ball to Kenyon Drake. They don't have Max Williams. They're run blocking tight end. And they're throwing wide receiver screens. They're they're running through the air, as we say. And by running through the air, of course, I mean being tackled behind the line of scrimmage. These wide receivers are in the wide receiver screen game. It has gone south for Arizona over the last two weeks. The offense is completely discombobulated. And the prescription is the New York Jets next week. And, and which makes this Kenyon Drake situation all the more difficult but for you. But the prescription was the Carolina Panthers yeah. this week. Well, no, I think that that's one of those... Uh, narrative over reality situations. Carolina was a team, new pieces, new coach, new quarterback, and they won the previous week. We only have a three-game sample size in Carolina. They're probably better than we thought they were. Sure, as a team, but as a run-stopping defense, they were the last place all last year and second to last place so far this year. We've definitely seen enough to know that they Well, that's true. Detroit the week before, worst on running back. Uh, defense and Drake did nothing there either. Yeah, yeah. you want you want to know the prescription uh, apparently for bad run defenses? It's the Arizona Cardinals. So we'll see this week against the Giants. But I I do agree with you from a fantasy standpoint. One of the biggest problems is the targets aren't going there. I mean, this is a this is a player that the previous season when he was involved on the Arizona Cardinals was on a great three down pace. You know, it was a it was a a player that was targeted seventy plus times. On a sixty-game, uh, sixteen-game pace, and it's not happening this. Perhaps time. the walking boot was not precautionary. Perhaps his foot is messed up. Just, just saying. Like we, we forget. Just a couple weeks ago, Kenyon Drake was walking around in the boot. It's a good point. He also went out injured at the end of the game. He did three I mean, minutes left. We, you will find out for sure because, well, I guess not for sure, but Kenyon Drake took a really hard shot. We have to wait on his injury stats. We haven't heard anything out of Arizona yet, but Chase Edmonds will be a hot waiver pickup. And if Chase Edmonds is the starter next week and is good, I think you have your answer about what's going on with Kenyon Drake. Well, I, man, yeah, it's process over results. I mean, you're not going to hit on every single player, and uh, A.J. Green's one I'm not going to hit on either. I mean, A.J. Green, I, I want to have a fantasy retirement ceremony on Wednesday. Yeah, okay. There are a number right. of players now. I, I'm, I'm trying to toe that line of you know, for fantasy players, these are not dead to me, dead to me type of mentality. This is a fantasy retirement. They play for their professional teams. They may contribute here and there, but they're done for fantasy. There are a number of players in that category this year, and AJ Green is most certainly one of those players. Yes, he is. All right, find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Jason's at Jason FFL if you want to console him. At FF Hitman, if you want to talk to Mike, at Andy Holloway is my handle. TheFantasyFootballers.com is the website where you can check out the rankings, the start, sit, tool, player profiles. We're making some upgrades this week to the player profile pages. JoinTheFoot.com is the community. Let's get into the news. 
Weekly Rewind. All right, Cam Newton is on the reserve COVID list after testing positive. He's un, uh, unlikely to play in week five against the Broncos. Correct. And, and yeah. it is Brian Hoyer who will be the next man up. Um, the game, like we said, it's tonight. Sonny Michel out of tonight's game. Devontae Adams out. Yeah, this is a fun one. The, the Devontae Adams where he was questionable, it really seemed like he was trending to play. There are... I mean, you actually have a couple more options now of uh, because of the Kansas City and New England game being pushed back to tonight. Now, you could be like me. Like, I was all in on Devontae Adams playing. I needed to Devontae. <laughs> I needed him to play, so I will be making a last-second waiver move, probably grabbing like Demarcus Robinson, Robert Tanyan, Maybe J.J. Taylor. We'll, we'll see who actually ends up on my roster, and then we will be crossing our fingers and praying for miracles. Yeah, Adams seemed unhappy that the team was holding him out of tonight's game. To be honest, they're undefeated. He's had injury history, lingering issues before. I think if there's any doubt about his health, it's probably the best news for him, yeah. not for fantasy players this week. What's rough for Aaron Rodgers and, and the Green Bay Packers they were, are now without their top two wide receivers. Jason's taking it up to 100 player. He feels like a good play, but since the, the pressure named, is going to be on Marquez Valdez-Scantling. Since you named him as you're taking it to 100 player, they have lost Helen Lazard for six to eight weeks, and then Devontae Adams was ruled out. He's taking it up to 100 as far as on the depth chart. <laughs> yes. I don't. We'll see what happens yeah. when he's the only thing now that the defense has to focus on. Did you see that Drew Sample did not take it to 100% catch rate this past weekend? I did He's, see that. I believe he caught that touchdown, to be honest with he you. He had another another. But misfire. I'm focusing on the touchdown. Nick Chubb exited the game early with a knee injury. Cautious optimism okay. from the Browns that okay. he did not suffer a catastrophic knee injury. Uh, MRI is coming today. At that point, we'll find out whether or not he's going to miss some time. Seems hard to imagine he doesn't miss a week or two. Agreed. Austin Eckler is the more mm. serious concern. If you watched the injury, it's being reported as a hamstring injury, some a hamstring and a knee. MRI today for Eckler. Mike, you described it yesterday. He could not even get on the cart. Yeah, so he finished off the play like an absolute manimal. I mean, he was... He was hopping through on one leg until they brought him down. He was down for a very long time. You could see in his face that this was this was not uh, not good. He gets trainers and, and people to help get him off the field. Has to take a break while walking off the field. Then the cart shows up, and he can't even get up onto the cart. That's how much pain he was in with his hamstring. So this, I mean, just optically looking at the man and you know not a doctor but Austin Eckler is going to miss a lot of time the Packers wide receivers tonight Marquez Valdez Scantling Tyler Irvin Darius Shepard Malik Taylor yep sounds about right so those are I'm bringing the names up because if you have to do that last second grab yeah MVS is probably not available uh Shepard would be my next dart throw simply because he got a target Last week, step one. I mean, and, and like Robert Tanyan, the he was at least five for fifty with a score last week. It. I think there's a a very large chance. Obviously, this doesn't help for for waivers, but we saw this with you know when Michael Thomas and some of the injuries uh, happened to the Saints. It, it it was all Camara in the dump. Oh offs, yeah, it's so. Aaron Jones. But if we're saying for people out there who are just scrambling to figure something out. All right, O.J. Howard tore his Achilles. Mm. Out for the season, according to Bruce Arians. So, down to Cameron Brait, Rob Gronkowski. Yeah. Five touchdown passes for Tom Brady yesterday. To five different players. Yeah. One was Keyshawn Vaughn. One yeah. was O.J. Howard. Yeah, and that was a nice one, too. It was great. It was it nice. looks good. Noah Fant. The reports are that he will be sidelined for week five. That was a weird injury because he didn't seem like he was in pain, but right. he was being carted off, but then they said it was minor, and now he's going to miss another week. And he came back at one point, and then now he's gone for another week. If you'd like to trade for Rob Gronkowski, Jason, that is oh, a, that offer is available to you. That is not interesting. <laughs> also, for the record, I would not like to roster Rob Gronkowski if not so for the fact that trade I... Trade from the waiver wire? I've, no, I have him because of the I know, but he Kelsey would... situation. 
All right, Kenyon Drake injured late. Kingsbury said hopefully not anything major. We talked about it. Tyler Eifert, a concussion. Any other big news, Brooks? Anything new coming through? Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The coming through is – what are you eating back there? Are you just like having some granola? It's just bad timing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no news. Uh, it's probably the just worst. Trying to get over from that <laughs> Cowboys game yesterday. The worst oh, moment of Brooks' one. life yeah, just yeah. happened. Nice um, yeah, the Cowboys. My goodness, there's wild stuff, man. Wild S West. Start your players against the Cowboys. That's that's what you got to do. Also, start the Cowboys. All of them, apparently, as many wide receivers yeah. as they have, play them. All right. Before we get to the stud muffins, want to thank today's sponsors. Footland, if you're ready to start exploring again, you can take a look at the city of Independence, Missouri. Plan a trip to a, a historic area with safety precautions that are in place. Look, Independence, Missouri is where the Heartland heritage is still beating strong. It's just outside Kansas City. Independence offers all the attractions of a big city but boasts a small town feel. You can take a step back in time as you discover the legendary legacy of President Truman who called Independence home. You can visit one of only 14 presidential libraries in the country, reopening this fall after a $30 million renovation, and of course indulge in mouth-watering barbecue and local brews on the historic Independence Square. And take a breath of fresh air in wide open parks and hiking spots. There is plenty of room for social distancing. Be sure to bring along your own favorite face covering as the country has a mask ordinance to keep visitors and locals safe. Find your independence at visitindependence.com and start writing your own great American story. Also, Foot Clan, we want to we want to thank Simply Safe Home Security. They're keeping us safe. You know we've been talking about Simply Safe. We're we're always talking the praises of the home security company because they keep us safe. They keep Brooks safe. All of his uh, you know jewelry, his really expensive things that he he likes to bling. Oh, he is just dripping. Yeah, wet. Yep. Always shining. That's Brooks's motto. That's always, right. always be, shining. Always be shining, and always be protected with Simply Safe Home Security. What's great about them? There's no tools, no wiring, no technician, no salesperson who has to has to step foot in your home because you set it up yourself, and it does not take that long. And you don't you don't even need to be a rocket scientist to set up Simply Safe. Anybody can do it. No contract, no hidden fees, no installation costs, and they monitor your home around the clock with security professionals who are there in the case of whatever emergency you may be facing. Like I said, the office has been protected by Simply Safe for years. Right now, visit simplysafe.com slash footballers. Get a free security camera plus a 60-day risk-free trial with any new system order. There's nothing to lose. Go today to simplysafe.com slash footballers, simplysafe.com slash footballers. This week's Fantasy Stud Muffins. Woo! Okay. Let's talk about the things that were fun. Yes, yes, yes. Well, was it fun? Was it fun for Dak? He says he would trade those hot stats for a win. 41 for 58 for 502 yards, four touchdowns. And they almost did it again. They, they were, what was it, 41 to 14? Yes, and it yes. Went, went down to 41-38 before the Beckham play. Unbelievable, man. Cowboy games are so fun right now. I not probably not for cowboy fans, but for football fans, they're very fun. He has uh sixteen hundred plus yards through four games. That is the record. <laughs> and what is his pace? Oh, that's a good question. I mean, <laughs> I think it's six thousand five hundred somewhere. Uh, I around think there. it was six thousand seven hundred was what I saw. Yeah. That is amazing. <laughs> Nobody has ever thrown for fifty five hundred yards before in the history of the NFL. <laughs> He's on pace for he 6 might to 700 do yards. I mean, Dak is <laughs> – is he the – let me ask the question. Do you want him as your fantasy quarterback over everybody else? And I mean that for this rest of the year. Based on – look, the recipe for a banner year, it always comes down to – it's the quarterback play, mm -hmm. but it's also the defense, and this defense is atrocious. And I know that we have that same recipe for Russ, but we also have a history of Russ being a little bit more up and down than Dak. We also have a history of Seattle figuring out their defense. They, mm -hmm. They've they got a great That's coach. I, I don't think Seattle's defense is going to stay terrible the rest of the way. The same way I don't think Minnesota's defense is going to stay terrible the rest of the way. When you've got a really good defensive-minded head coach who can rally his troops and get things together, 
Yeah, yeah I don't, I don't know about them Cowboys. Yeah, Dak feels like the number one guy moving forward. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Tom Brady, without uh, some of his major weapons in this game, 30 for 46, 369 and 5. Plant and oh, oh, man. The plant man comes out and drops a five-touchdown game. The chloroform was flowing. He is the oldest player to throw five touchdowns in a game. He's the oldest player to do everything right yeah, now. Yeah, anytime he does something that <laughs> is like pretty good, it's like, hey, he's the oldest guy to ever do that. Is it? Am I right that they have the Thursday night game? Yes. Against Chicago? Yes. Okay, so we'll see what he does on Thursday night, short week. Tom Brady, big, big week against the Chargers, who held Patrick Mahomes in check, but could not hold Tom Brady in check. Mm -hmm. Teddy Bridgewater. Yeah, man. Got to play the Cardinals without Buda Baker, and it was not pretty for Arizona. It was it was surprising um, a, a, a little bit just how bad um, the Cardinals' defense was. I, I, did they make them punt? I think they made them punt once. I think they scored touchdowns in their first, you know, four possessions. Now, next that. that being said, it can't all go on Arizona. Carolina, like you said earlier, they're surprising. They look like a, a pretty decent offense. And this has been without Christian McCaffrey next That's week. That's been they, the key. Right. They're 2-0 <laughs> and without McCaffrey. That's right. Um, you know, so next week they play in Atlanta. I think you can keep rolling in the, the heat of the uh, of the Panthers. The problem is it's Robbie Anderson, not DJ Moore. Yeah, that, that part does suck and hurts my feelings. But we did hi we highlighted last week of like the, the – the regression's coming for Teddy Bridgewater of how he has all these yards, but he just didn't have the passing touchdowns and add in a sensational 20-yard or whatever it was rushing touchdown. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater is a very strong streamer next week. All right, the Stallion. Oh. Josh Allen keeps it going. Excellent. He had I another rushing touchdown, a couple passing touchdowns. Yeah, when, when you said you feel like Dak is the number one guy, I feel like Josh Allen should, you know, at least be entering the ring. He's there, yeah, he can be in the ring. I think there's, you know, five guys who are all vying for that number one spot here. Josh Allen has been great. Kyler, even when he's sucking, is still good because he runs the ball, scores rushing touchdowns. Obviously, Russell's there. And then how can you discount Mahomes and Lamar? So you, you've got some real, real heavy hitters at the top of the quarterback position right now. Lamar, bounce back, 7 for 53 and a touchdown. Big run in this game. couple passing touchdowns to Mark Andrews. Mm -hmm. Justin Herbert, a really impressive performance against Tampa Bay's defense, 20 for 25, 290 and 3. A lot of people played, you know, Jared Goff this week as a substitute quarterback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Justin I'm Herbert, guilty. Do, I, I don't blame you. The matchup was great, but Justin Herbert put up a big performance. And the arm talent is what impresses me on a weekly basis with Justin Herbert. Man, when he throws a deep ball, it is a pretty looking deep ball. Yeah. And there was a, a wild stat that uh, I had heard. All of his touchdowns went to undrafted free agents. Wow. So, I mean, he's getting it done. And, like, I mean, I, I guess we're ahead of ourselves here, but we didn't really talk. If Austin Eckler is out, holy crap, Keenan Allen is going to see so many targets. He, I mean, he already is, but it's like, where do the where do the missing targets go? They go to Keenan Allen. All right, Joe Mixon. Hello. Have a game. Have a game, Joe. Have a game where you receive 25 rushing attempts, 151 and two, and then six targets, caught all six passes. All of the fab that was spent on Gio Bernard before the game will be donated to a charity of Joe Mixon's choice. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. true. Now, but this was the uh, this is the number one running back on the week. It absolutely was Baltimore, Indianapolis, Cleveland. That's what's coming up for Joe Mixon. Uh, I think I know where Andy stands because you're Joe. You are the the captain of the jo of the Joe Mixon train. Jason, would you be trading Joe Mixon right now? I would certainly be seeing if I can if I can capitalize on a monstrous game and have so every league has that one player who just is so recency biased on the last week that you could trade him like he's the best running back in all of fantasy football. Um, but I, I do think when, you know, what this shows is that 
these players who are getting a ton of volume and disappointing because it's easy to think about this today, but yesterday morning, people were more worried about Joe Mixon than they were about Kenyon Drake. And then all of a sudden, one great game cures everything. You you hold on. You don't you don't look to unload, but if you can capitalize on the hope of you know his ceiling, then if he hits, you're fine, and if he misses, you're you're happy. You traded him high. I think you hit on a key point for fantasy players. Don't exchange the volume that Mixon is getting Certainly. for anomalous lower volume players, multi-player trades where you're not getting. It's hard to get guaranteed volume, and when you have 31 touches, he was already in the top five in terms of total touches heading into the week, which is why Jason made the argument about things looking up because mm -hmm. when you have opportunity, great players who just got paid – they generally have great – they make great plays at some point in time. So Baltimore, Indianapolis, those are two really tough matchups. So it's not going to be this good every week, but it's no. nice to see it happen. Dalvin Cook, 27 for 130 and two. He's very good. Yeah. Melvin Gordon, we talked about it Thursday night, took it to 1,000 with a couple touchdowns. <laughs> yes, he did. This game was impressive. Chris Carson. Mm-hmm. 16 for 80, two touchdowns against Miami in a game that was kind of lower scoring. He really was a difference maker, and we didn't know how he was feeling coming into the game. Well, we weren't sure, you know, is he going to play? Is Hyde going to be the starter? And then he, he got injured at one point through the game, and then, of course, Carlos Hyde was out. He did not play. So, you know, we they both cropped up on the uh, on the injury report. Turns out that Carlos Hyde was legit because he couldn't play football. So th this is another one of those, <clears throat> I think you could sell high here on Chris Carson. That's a monstrous game. He is banged would? up. I think I would, yeah, because mm. this is a game where Carlos Hyde was gone. Um, he had to be the, the every down guy here, but he himself is banged up. My point is I think you can get a lot for him, and I don't think he's going to always be playing without Carlos Hyde. Mike, Chris Carson, Joe Mixon, rest of the season. Chris Carson. Latavius Murray had a couple of touchdowns, 14 opportunities on the ground. They had a big lead, and Latavius was all right in this one. I think he's just there to annoy fantasy players. Yeah, I'm not reading into it. How are we burying this guy? Antonio Gibson, uh, Mike. How did it feel to see Antonio Gibson? Well, I, it was very bittersweet uh, because I wanted to bench Antonio Gibson, and my <laughs> advice from the week was – to bench Antonio Gibson, and here's where it was difficult because during my process of Antonio Gibson was, what is his ceiling? 40-something 40, 40 rushing yards and a touchdown, and they haven't unleashed him in the passing game. That is exactly what I said about him. Where is he? 46 and a touchdown, but they finally gave him five targets. He came through with a huge receiving play, so, and I, I don't know if that's – that if you, I don't know if you can count on that every single week because it. Steven Sims was out. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, as, as as one who has loved Antonio Gibson since the draft, it was pretty awesome to see it. Seven total targets before this week had five in this week alone against Baltimore. You are going to run into unpredictability with Antonio Gibson because Absolutely. the offense is uh, it's inefficient. The quarterback position you could see change over the course of the year. But Gibson himself is a very talented player, so you can always take a shot with him as a start mm -hmm. and end up, no matter what the matchup is, with a big game. Did you know that Dwayne Haskins had over 300 yards and a 70-plus well, percent completion percentage? Stats are for losers, Mike. That's oh. what, oh, I have been told that. According to Booger McFarland, <laughs> stats are for losers. It is. He should, he should have led with the Dwayne Haskins stat on his stats are for losers tweet because that one seems ridiculous. Yeah, it just everyone plays four quarters and those soft underneath coverages. Hmm. Mike Davis oh. is very good. Apparently, six. He he genuinely looks good. No, I'm saying he it, like he is. It, this was this was a guy who was on Chicago, had the starting job, and then they drafted David Montgomery. And then they just cast him aside, just like they did with Jordan Howard. And now Mike Davis is like the most elusive running back in football. He is absolutely crushing with his opportunity right now. Those who paid up to get him off the waiver wire are 
celebrating. Again, and he gets Atlanta next week. He did play Arizona, but the week prior he looked good, and I, I think he's going to have another great week. That being said, you picked him up off the waivers. Did you need him? In which case, great. You're happy. Keep starting him. Did you just snag him because the value was there and you've got other good running backs? Go to the Christian McCaffrey owner and try to sell him for a season-long piece because you've got about another week left. Once Christian McCaffrey comes back, Mike Davis is nothing but an insurance option. They're not going sure. to you know, be like, well, now that you've played well, let's go 50-50 split with our you know, most expensive running back of all time. Christian McCaffrey is going to inherit this role. Um, I was going to ask you that question if you thought there would be an easing back in period for Christian McCaffrey off I, the injury. There I, will be a little bit. Yeah, I mean a little bit. You're going to see you know, four or five more touches for Mike Davis than you would have beforehand. But you know, once Christian McCaffrey is back, uh, it's, it's his game. You're not going to even have the potential to start Mike Davis again unless uh, a re-injury. So my point is if you've got him and you can capitalize, turn him into something that will be more than just another week or two, you can't. I'm a Christian McCaffrey manager that if 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 in our league someone came to me offering Mike Davis, I would take a strong look at going, okay, I might give up a legit piece that could help someone rest the season for Mike Davis. It is a situation where if you do have CMC and Mike Davis, you know you have a start. Exactly. All right, Kareem Hunt, 11 for 71 and two touchdowns. Chubb knocked out of the game. Hunt was questionable going into the game. Looked good, ran for another seven a carry because he's Kareem Hunt. Mm -hmm. Is Hunt locked in as a top ten running back if Chubb is out? Yes. yes. I mean, he's – you could almost argue he's a top ten running back with Chubb in. Um, and he's so, had great, a great start to the year. Yeah, with, without him, you uh, Hunt is as good as it gets out there. Jarek McKinnon, nice to see him succeed. Eight targets, seven catches, 14 for 54 and a touchdown on the ground. I believe McKinnon has scored in every game. Has he? So far <laughs> in 2020. So the the return of Jarek McKinnon is it's a two year effort by him to get back. It is just it. You are correct. He has scored in every single game. And it's like this is an unbelievable feel good story. It's so cool of like your boy strong. He yeah, he apparently is. Yeah, <sighs> man. It feels it, it really does feel good. Like yeah. I'm happy for the man because that that kind of two year struggle. He was he was going to be a my guy that year and then. Oof, got injured and never we I don't think either of any of us thought we'd see him again. Well, it'd probably be if Mostert comes back next week, it'll be Mostert and McKinnon against Miami. Agreed. And both are probably start worthy in I, that game. I right. wonder if once Coleman comes back, is it still I think Coleman's buried. Yeah, that that's what I'm wondering. Is yep. he behind McKinnon now? All right, wide receivers. We've got some players to talk about. O B J. Eight targets, five for 81, two touchdowns through the air, two for 73 and a touchdown on the ground. Saw somebody tweet about the fact that Beckham scored three times, had a monster game, and Baker didn't even play well because he ran one in, caught one from Jarvis Landry who threw a dart. Yeah, it's because stats Looking are like boomer, nerds, bro. Boomer Esiason out there. <laughs> a boomer reference? Hey, it's the only lefty. I mean, you can go Mark Brunel or Boomer. What do you want to do? Matt Leinert? Come on. Yeah, right, if a southpaw's point. throwing the ball into the end zone, it's going to get a boomer reference. Fair enough. Which is different than Booker. Be let me be clear. Yes, right. Very different. I would have gone Vic. That's a strong point. That's a strong point. <laughs> that was much. So really, really, really. I mean, Matt Liner. That's how deep we're going here. I, I went back. I went back a little bit. You did. All right. All right. So Odell do sell, Beckham. Do you sell high on Odell Beckham? Well, he you asked me that two weeks ago. Right, and you said no. Yeah, so I, I still say no. The the reason being, this is a great offense right now. This is an offense that Kevin Stefanski has worked uh, into something that works, which is not what we expected to see in Cleveland. So will Beckham be a high-volume player for your team? Absolutely not. Never. Will he be a player that can win you a week every two or three weeks and mm -hmm. still give you some type of floor? I think so. I yeah. think this year that's the truth. Yeah, very, very high variance player this year. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I happen to think that the next two weeks will be on the low variance of variety, uh, two of the most difficult matchups out there in the Indianapolis Colts and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Uh, but, you know, he's he is he looks like himself. Like, we were talking, this was early in the game, 
uh, before he just blew up while we were watching. He looks good. He looks like his old self. The most important play of the game for Beckham was the two-yard slant touchdown and the fact that they drew up a goal line opportunity for Beckham, got him an ISO, and then threw him the ball. That mm -hmm. was a problem last year. Um, Amari Cooper, 16 targets. He's been amazing. I mean, it's funny because sometimes we're watching these games and we feel like, ah, he's kind of disappearing. He's, you know, whatever. But 14 targets, 9 targets, 12 targets, 16 targets. Yeah. I got the breakdown for you through four weeks if you want it. Let's yeah. go. Dak through four weeks, 1,690 yards. Gallup has 275 of them. That's only 16%. Mm -hmm. Cooper has 401 of them. That's 24%. Lamb is at 309. That's 18%. Target-wise, Cooper's at 51. Lamb at 29. Gallup at 24. When you are in perpetual catch-up slash <laughs> From the first minute garbage of the game. time, <laughs> like, <laughs> we just anoint – if you're saying Dak is the number one guy that – because of the defense, like Amari Cooper is the number one benefactor from this. Yeah, he's currently on pace for 148 receptions. So that won't happen, but that's uh, – I mean, It, what might. More can it you, really <laughs> might. What more could you ask for? What did Thomas catch last year? What was the – what's the record? I uh, will yeah. look that up. Do you remember that, Brooks, the total? I can't remember the exact number. Uh, I can't remember either. Okay. All right. Uh, C.D. Lamb, seven targets, five for seventy-nine and two. You will not be skipping over my man D.J. Chark and his oh. his nine targets, eight for ninety-five and Deuce. Welcome back, D.J. Yeah, that's great to see. Have a game. Um, also, the record was one hundred and forty-nine receptions. Yeah, so he won't break it. Mm. Yeah, only one. But D.J. Chark, great to see the target totals. Honestly, I mean the touchdowns because of his size. You know, we had seen it a couple of times to start the year, but the nine targets coming down with eight of them, Houston, Detroit, this is DJ Tark, Chark time. Yes. It's Chark week. Yeah. Chark weeks, maybe. Yes. CeeDee Lamb. Uh, CeeDee Lamb, Michael Gallup, rest of the season. CeeDee Lamb. Yes, CeeDee Lamb. I mean, He's good. It, He's it a really good be. player, man. Yeah. I, I Look, I, I loved uh, Michael Gallup coming into draft season. I think I still think Michael Gallup has a fine season. Um but if I have to pick one of those two guys, CeeDee Lamb, you know, there's a reason that one of these guys was a first-round pick and uh, super highly touted, questionable if he should be the number one wide receiver taken in the draft. That wasn't Gallup when he was coming out, and usually it takes a little bit more time. It The timeline is over. CeeDee Lamb is and they, in. It's just where they get in the ball. I mean, Michael Gallup is his, like, uh, yards per catch is over 20. I mean, he's having the higher – risk throws where lamb is down in the 14 range getting the slant route getting to run with it you just have more variable gallup's going to have good games like you said it's just going to be hard to predict mm -hmm. all right other big plays at the wide receiver position will fuller seven targets six catches 108 and one i'm gonna take credit <laughs> i've decided <laughs> uh you I, never pivoted i didn't pivot um no i look he's healthy and when he's healthy, he's gotten double digits three games while he's been healthy. Six for one, eight and one. Uh, he meanwhile, is, yes. Brandon Cooks, <laughs> he ran 40 routes according to uh, what I read and was not yeah, he should, able to. He Is he on uh, Wednesday's retirement ceremony? He is. That right. goose is at the very back of that flying V. You know what I mean? Like you, yes, yeah. Like I mean, he could. He's the extra goose on the one side of the V that you don't need, right? Slump. But theoretically, he could move to the front if the hamstring. <laughs> what? How? What's the voice of the hamstring? Oh, it was hello. Uh, oh, <laughs> big hamstring blot. <laughs> he was uh, the hamstring was okay. Yeah, it's good. Mike Evans is pretty good. Seven for one, twenty-two and one, while limping around yeah. the field which he pretty much might as well just start doing. Maybe if you – can you hurt yourself if you pre-limp? Mm, if you limp yeah. before – I mean, if, if you walk with an unnecessary limp, yes. That's what I'm saying. Maybe that's a, that's not a good way to, uh, to break it down. Oh, yeah. my goodness. Breaking news. Nick Chubb has been placed on the IR with an MCL injury. So that's three games minimum yeah. for Nick Chubb. So Kareem Hunt – Oh, brother. Oh, brother. Yeah, oh, brother. Oh. Okay, Allen Robinson. Ten targets, seven for 101 and one. It was entirely... Oh, the garbage man can. 
it, it, let me let me say two things. One, it was entirely garbage time. Two, Nick Foles is just as bad as Mitch Trubisky. Three, Allen Robinson deserves better on every level. Every catch he made was a catch that I feel like him and Keenan Allen or you know, a handful of players in the league are the only ones that can make the catch because these Nick Foles targets were disgusting. Oh, he mossed a dude that didn't yeah. count because it was going to be an interception, but he just went up and caught it behind him out of the end zone. But, yeah, I mean, the the thing is, is it was really upsetting. You, you, you watch that last drive, and I remember the commentators even saying, like, well, you know, why weren't the Bears playing like this the whole game? <laughs> and and it was, it's not the Bears, it was the Colts. The yeah. Colts were just letting them dink and dunk their way down the field. And that was fine with them. It, it is a scary proposition. You're not oh, – some teams, like the Cowboys, you you can – garbage time starts one minute into the game and you're good. But you're not going to always get garbage time like that. So it's a little concerning. Let me let me ask you a question. Put these three players in order who you'd rather have on your roster rest of season, okay? Because they all have a little different narrative. All right. Odell Beckham Jr., Okay. Allen Robinson – and Terry McLaurin, who has oh. uh, 14 targets this past week, seems rather matchup and quarterback proof to a degree. Put those three in order. Terry would be number one for me. And then I would probably go Allen Robinson and Odell Beckham. I will go Terry, Allen Robinson, uh, Beckham. And cause here's the thing about I Nicole. really like your order. Your order was fantastic, Thank Jason, you. by the way. I, I apologize for not complimenting you <laughs> earlier on it. Here's the thing for Terry McLaurin. He's doing all this with Dwayne Haskins, and I, I know that the numbers for Dwayne Haskins did not reflect the majority of the game. There is a world where Kyle Allen comes in and things improve dramatically for Terry McLaurin compared to what he's dealing with with Dwayne Haskins. For Allen Robinson, there's no improvement. It's Nick Foles. It's or funny because that's the same sentence from last week. It was like, there's a world where Nick Foles comes in and things improve dramatically yep. for Allen Robinson. Yep, but it, Nick Foles is he, he is who we thought he was, which is a, a man who hit some, like the Tinkerbell came through, sprinkled the pixie dust all over him, and he had a magical half season and a Super Bowl run. Other than that, Nick Foles has been not a starting quarterback in the NFL. I had a hard time this past week deciding whether to swap Allen Robinson and o OBJ. Mm. And then, you know, when Robinson had about two catches three quarters of the way through the game and Beckham had 38 fantasy points, I was saying, wow, Beckham's the right play here. And then Robinson comes back at the end of this game. It's going to be interesting right to watch those, those three. Kittle, decent game. Oh, my goodness. 15 targets, 15 catches, 183 and one. Oh, my goodness, George Kittle. I mean, he really, 15 up. for 16. That he should he should have had that. Oh, you're two calling point the conversion. La oh, okay. That I thought doesn't you were, count as a target. Though. Yeah, I know. Not a target. That's what I'm, I'm just saying. I thought you were talking about the Hail Mary. No, oh man, that would have been awesome. Um, he loves backup quarterbacks. If you remember his his record breaking season, that was Nick Mullins for ten of those games, I believe. So Nick Mullins, George I said, Kittle. I feel like he can go into the huddle and look him in the eye and be like. Give me the ball. Throw me the ball, Give bro. Give it to me right now. Give <laughs> and me. And they're like, oh, okay, okay, George, take it easy. But yeah. when it's a 100% catch rate. You're allowed to say that. <laughs> just keep I'm, doing I'm, it. I'm not disagreeing with him. I love the way that when Kittle catches the ball, it's a minimum of three tackles that he breaks. Like those first three people, you have to break those tackles before you tackle them. Mm -hmm. Mark Andrews, three catches, 57 and two. It's the same recipe for yep. Mark Andrews. Dalton Schultz, four oh. for seventy-two and one. Start of the week. Now, did he get hurt in this game? Yeah, I yes. thought he got. He came out. Is he okay? Uh, I have not seen an update. He was grabbing his hamstring, I believe, um, but I, I haven't seen any news on how severe that injury is. All right, we've got to talk about some stank. Mm. Stinkers of the week, presented by Odor Eaters. Gonna need some real odor eaters power for some of these guys. Yes. Biggest disappointment of the week. Kenya Drake. At the quarterback position. <laughs> we'll get, oh, we'll okay. get there, Jason. We already got there. We led the show with that garbage. <laughs> Jared Goff, 25 for 32, just 200 passing yards, one touchdown. 
And this game was not fun to watch. No, it was not. It was so bad. And Daniel both. Jones was awful. I mean, yeah, they both threw for 200 or fewer yards. The Rams offense has been just chugging along. I mean, they've looked great. They went to Buffalo, and even after they got off to a slow start, they just went nuclear, and, and then they get to play the Giants. Did they just take it? take the game off? Well, here's the problem is in those games, Jason, where you alluded to them going nuclear, having a really high-powered offense, uh, the engine of that offense was Daryl Henderson, and apparently the hot hand was every down Malcolm Brown because Daryl Henderson, what was his, his final stat line? Eight carries. He was never on the field. What were you, What happened? I don't know. I don't know either. We, so weird. We thought he was hurt. I demand answers, McVeigh. You saw him sitting on the bench, and he, for whatever reason, we thought maybe we had more clarity in this situation than we did some of these other committee backfields, the Tampa Bay situation. Nope. Now you're sitting here going, I can't start anybody. Yeah, Cam Akers comes back soon. Uh, who's it going to be? Mm. Man, that was upsetting. But yeah, Goff as well. Uh, did did not look great for fantasy. Kenyon Drake, we talked about it. I don't know what you do going forward with the Jets on the schedule next week. If he's healthy and active, you probably if he if he's healthy and active, you start him unless you've got a better option. I mean, if you know, if I'm talking about James Robinson or Kenyon Drake, I'm going to be putting James Robinson in, in my lineup. What about David Montgomery, who had a struggle this week with Nick Foles? We thought it might be better for him in the passing game. He did see six targets. He was out there, yeah, but. Montgomery plays Tampa Bay. Kenyon Drake against the Jets. Who do you start? Uh, between those two, I would I would start Kenyon Drake because of the matchup. If you're going to talk about the Colts' great defense and the Jets' wink defense, right. I'm, I'm taking. I feel like it's it, we've been set up with Drake. I know it's two a great trap. matchups in it's a row. A trap. <laughs> Here he is recommending Drake again. Oh, I <clears throat> scrub that. Scrub it. I mean, scrub I'm it. just so uh, upset. You're hurt. You're I hurt. am hurt because. Yeah, because I was very confident in in Drake, and then we get the Homer bias line of like, "Oh, it's because you're a Cardinals fan," it's, which is uh, is I wasn't confident in Drake, and I'm not yes, taking a no, victory lap over that. Weren't. I'm just saying, like, it wasn't all. It's we not, weren't all like Drake's going to have the number one year of the season, I've, and neither were you. I mean, I've been a Drake truther since he was a dolphin. That's true. And, oh, and, wee little babby. Yes, yeah, since, since he was at Bama. This has nothing to do with him as a Cardinal. No. No, and it's a mess. Uh, Jonathan Taylor, what if you have a question about Daryl Henderson, why in the world is Jonathan Taylor getting 16 carries and the other two running backs each getting nine? Jordan Wilkins, nine carries. Naeem Hines, nine carries. Yeah, but on those nine carries for Wilkins, like incredible yardage, right? 1.7 per carry. Ooh. What? Yeah, but what about Hines? Two point something per carry. What about Taylor? Oh, he was like four a carry. Well, you, I mean, he got 17 carries, so it's not like – but they're so spor – here's the problem is they're sporadic. Like, Jonathan Taylor is a is the, the big body prototype running back that you give him the ball. If you're if this is your play style, you give him the ball over and over and over, Marshawn Lynch style, because after you – to paraphrase Marshawn Lynch, after you run through somebody's face enough times – Over and, and over. They don't want to get in the way anymore, and that's who Jonathan Taylor should be – but if you just give him two carries here, then you throw in Hines for a while. It, it, I know we're just fantasy football guys, but it's like I, this is not this is not the optimal way to utilize Jonathan Taylor's skill set. I agree with you to a point. And if this was the playoffs, I'll bet you that the entirety of the team agrees. But this is early in the season. Right, that this is, is the, problem, the centerpiece keeping of keeping him fresh. Yeah, absolutely. There, there's no reason to take this rookie in games that you're winning handily and the other team can't score on you for three straight weeks and say, let's run him into the ground. I think they're doing the right thing. But I have been concerned with what I've seen from Jonathan Taylor as well, or disappointed, yeah. because I expected him to do more with the touches he's getting right now behind that offensive line than he's been doing. Miles Sanders, 13 for 46 against the 49ers, four targets, two for 30. I don't really – It's hard to run without an offensive line. Yeah, I'm not – I thought Miles Sanders looked independently good on every one of his touches. He yep. does have Pittsburgh-Baltimore coming up, so it's going to be a rough 
it, few weeks with no other weapons on this team. Miles Sanders, it, it just it is what it is. I mean, he's he is a true three down running back, and you'll you'll get bad games. You get bad games from basically everybody every once in a while. Yeah, this was one of those games where I thought he looked better than the stat line ended up. To be honest, sure. Josh Jacobs, fifteen for forty-eight, four targets, three same, catches. Same thing for Josh Jacobs as Miles Sanders. If we, when you see Jacobs get a get a carry, and when he's not you know smothered in the backfield, you're like, this this guy is fantastic. Just didn't come through for fantasy. Are we are we worried at all though? Because you know he hasn't been a top twenty back in the last three weeks. He was obviously the number one back week one. So we just you know that sure. that that week one That's hit fair. is like he's the best thing ever. But it's three disappointing weeks in a row, and we saw this last year where his touchdowns came in games where it's like he gets two or three touchdowns, and then they win the game, or or he he's just not great for fantasy. I'm not concerned. Like I'm, you're just going to keep starting him, but the we only, have to be disappointed, right? A little bit disappointed, yeah. I mean they they're not winning right now these last two weeks. I like that he's getting more consistent reception totals. I think all four games he's had at least three catches. That's true. Last year, he only did that a, a couple times. But, yeah, I he's somebody that needs to probably get into the end zone in these games. He's not giving you the matchup-proof game right now. The, so, the thing for guys disappointed. like Josh Jacobs and Miles Sanders is who are you going to start over those guys? I mean, right now at the top, there is, there's a pretty tight cluster of, you know, six, seven guys who are, who are the every week auto start but who like who are you grabbing to, I, I, to start nobody, over Josh Jacobs? I think it's people that you've already grabbed, the James Robinson, the Mike Davis, these players. Do you do you put them in ahead of some of these people who have been disappointing, right. or do you keep rolling with the high drafted guys who are getting the touches? And I think that's a difficult decision. It's not it's not cut and so, dry as we go Antonio into Antonio Gibson. If you had drafted Antonio Gibson late, and you have Josh Jacobs, are you willing to play Gibson over him? No, I'm no. not. Okay, no, I'm, I'm not either. Cause, well, it's funny because the, the both teams, Miles Sanders and Josh Jacobs, they have no wide receivers. It's like Josh Jacobs and the Raiders have Nelson Aguilar, who the Eagles once had and probably desperately oh, I, wish they had. I was thinking about that last night. I was like, the Eagles legit probably they are like, him. I wish we had Nelson Aguilar. All right, jo world. Joshua Kelly had an awful ball game. Yeah. And this was, you know, Eckler went out. and He also fumbled again. He did, uh, but then he was still on the field. I, I, I was paying attention to that, seeing are they going to punish him. They didn't, but he just stunk. Nine carries, seven yards, and a fumble. Yuck. And Justin Jackson was active in this game? Yeah, he got six carries, but it was uh, six carries for nine yards. So tomorrow, we'll be talking waiver pickups. We'll have to discuss Joshua Kelly and Justin Jackson with Eckler's injury. Yep. And Which the Ernest Johnson with the Chubb. Uh, the guy that was in there for the Cleveland Browns getting a ton of run and looking great. Yeah. I won't hit the breaking news button because it's very ambiguous, but it's uh, Chargers running back Austin Eckler. I mean, speak of the devil here. Uh, suffered what is considered a serious hamstring injury while no firm decision will be made until all the analysis is, is done. Injured reserve is the likely landing spot. It seems. Yeah. All, all it's, but it's, it's inevitable. It's just a whether he's gone for the year. Yes. Wide receivers that had uh, some stinkers this week. It's a it's a big group. Uh, Tyler Lockett. Oh, that man. one is two, shocking. Two for thirty nine. The number one wide receiver going out there and yuck. David Moore was the guy to have apparently in this shocking. One. DJ Moore six targets four yeah. catches forty nine yards. Yep. No uh, touchdowns four game four weeks into the season. If Jason can apologize for Kenny Drake, look, I am. DJ Moore is not coming through with who I believed he would be. The process, uh, for me, like it didn't factor in enough the transition of to Teddy Bridgewater, and Bridgewater goes to Robbie Anderson, who is the number one wide receiver for Carolina. DeAndre Hopkins, I don't. It's hard to say it was a oh, stinker. Boo. That's not boo. a stinker. Get out seven, of here. Seven catches, nine targets. Yeah. Uh, as the Jets, Dallas, and Seattle. Uh, Robert Woods, seven targets, six catches, thirty-five yards. It was another Cooper Cup week. Mm -hmm. Cooper Cup's had a couple big ones in a row. Offense was struggling. Golf was struggling. Uh, Gallup, we talked about, yep. worried about him. There is a geriatric stinker section on today's show. <laughs> oh, no. This is pretty much the uh, 
the players that let's fit save that. them then we'll save them okay, you know we'll, who they are we'll save it for the retirement ceremony yeah. all all of them are in that list tight ends uh tyler higby just three for 21 in this game four targets gerald are you everett, worried about Ty tyler higby absolutely i mean gerald everett has been on the field just as much as getting targets as getting handoffs and some days it's going to be an everett game some days it's going to be a higby game um you you have to be a little bit worried uh, it's just it that's the nature of what you've seen from this offense, and they're going to make the defense keep guessing, right? I mean, it, we thought it was going to be a Daryl Henderson game. They can go to different wide receivers. Is it Cooper? Is it Woods? They can go to different tight ends. They can go to different running backs, and that is not fun for fantasy. So the tight end I am worried about, I brought it up to you guys right before the show started. Uh, I have him in on quite a few fantasy teams, but Zach Ertz. Zach Ertz so far has been – uh, a top 10 tight end once all the other three games he has finished 15th or worse a try a player you drafted in the fourth or the fifth round and the situation for Zach Ertz is exactly what it has been for him when he has thrived before it was Zach Ertz is a volume guy if the wide receivers around him are hurt the offense funnels through Zach Ertz he it becomes the main guy and I relate to you guys I'm watching Zach Ertz because he's on my team. I think he's washed, and I know that's it's. He's that is a, a bold. It is a bold statement, statement for a player of his age, but he is. He doesn't get open. the The reason the the volume is not going his way is because he's simply not getting open, and they ha Carson Wentz has to find somebody else, which often translates into the tight end too on the team. So, I like what. Let's okay. I'm a, I need some therapy here. I drafted Zach Ertz in the fourth or the fifth round. He has given me one performance out of four. Yeah. How do I keep just banging my head against the wall with Zach Ertz when guy? Because you don't have a choice. And that this what you I don't. Mean, like, I mean, you can't start. Look at some of the potential starts of this past week. Mike Rob Kasicki. Gronkowski, one for twenty nine. Jimmy Graham, Poo, four for thirty three. <laughs> Mike Gesicki, one for 15. I mean, it's the tight well, end What about position. Evan Ingram? He had 10 targets. What did he put up? Six for 35. Look, when you're, when Zach I don't know if you have a choice. When Zach Ertz is putting up four receptions for nine yards. You, I guess that, everybody that, else is better. That Jimmy Graham line of four for 33 looks pretty sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it, it is. Uh, I know that you were watching with a close eye, and it's almost impossible to argue with you when you look at the depth chart at wide receiver. These are the four games that Zach Ertz should be taking advantage of it. And you end up with four for nine. And now we get Pittsburgh it, and Baltimore. Yeah, I was going to bring that up. It, it's it's a rough couple of weeks here. But you're but I mean, tell I me. did try to reverse the curse last night, and it looked like I it, thought you it, did a, a valiant yeah, job. That's as far as you can reverse a curse with this with, many injuries with that wide receiver court. Yeah. <laughs> Curse and wins. Oh, stinkers of the week, presented by Odor Eaters. Odor Eaters, the best in foot odor defense. Brooks would like it known that uh, DeAndre Hopkins, 7 for 41, is officially a stinker by his standards, which I suppose if you are not in a full-point PPR league, that is a stinker. 41 yards that for is a the presumptive number one wide receiver out All there. All right, we'll give it to you. We'll give it to you. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we want to thank Pristine Auction for supporting the show. they got a special auction for NBA Finals Week. Everything starts at $20 with no reserves. It lasts through Thursday, which thankfully the NBA Finals will last beyond that date thanks to the Heat actually winning a ball game. They so, did. Use the code BALLERS to get a $10 credit at pristineauction.com if you want to participate in that or check out any of their hundreds of daily sports memorabilia auctions. Are we doing okay, gentlemen? Are uh, we doing we're, right? we're doing fantastic, Ready man. for a couple Monday Night Football games? Yes, I, I need them. Ready for some waiver wire discussion tomorrow absolutely all right that is it for the fantasy footballers today stay strong everybody stay safe we'll see you tomorrow goodbye thank you for listening to another episode of the fantasy footballers podcast join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on twitter at the ff ballers Footland, do not forget about Simply Safe Home Security. Protect your whole home around the clock. It takes just a simple 30-minute setup process that you 
do yourself, and you can visit simplysafe.com slash footballers. You're going to get a free security camera plus a 60-day risk-free trial with any new system order. Nothing to lose. Simplysafe.com slash footballers.